Do you like cracking packs? Join the Jackman Games Patreon to have a chance to win a box every month. Hey, what is up, guys? This is Ray and Ashton. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> All, right, All right, let's do it again. Let's do it again. All right. What is up, guys? This is Ray and Ashton. And we are from Jackalman Games, and we are going to bring you another episode of Let's Talk. Uh, seems like we got a lot of good responses from our first episode, uh, which you could check out on our YouTube channel as well as our podcast. Uh, we have that on iTunes and Google Play, so you guys can check it out there. And we discussed um, Kylo Ren and Arinda Price, their, their deck breakdown, and that was a lot of fun. So today, we're going to get into the top 10 mitigation cards that we have identified here at Jackalman Games that we know are going to be in some of the top decks. We have Gen Con going on right now, and Ashton was kind of just talking to me about some of the standings of day one. But, you know, before that whole entire competition ends, we're going to try to get in this top 10 mitigation and kind of see if we, you know, were right or wrong about what we have identified as being the best mitigation cards in the game. And where we're coming up with these top 10 mitigation cards is from us playing people inside TTS, us playing people at our locals, and obviously the store championships. So a lot of store championships are still going on. I have about two more that I'm going to attend in this month here of August, and we're going to see kind of what pops up. But a lot of people are playing some of the new way of the force cards that we want to talk about and where we see them fitting in the top 10. And also we have a honorable mentions in the end of this, which are cards that we feel are very great and very strong, um, but they didn't really take the top 10 for us. You know, top 10 is gonna be cards that we feel will have a place for a long time. Top 10 cards are gonna be things that are a lot of neutral, a lot of things that fit in a lot of different decks and aren't very one-sided. And um, we're gonna kind of dive right through them. Yep, so I just wanna say, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, um, you know, we have some visual aids here. If you guys are listening through our podcast, then uh, come over to the YouTube if you want to see some of the cards. If you're a newer player and aren't really familiar, we're going to do the best we can to read off the cards, um, you know, their, their resource costs and what they do. And, um, yeah, like uh, Ashton said, we're just going to hop right in. All right, so here we go. So for the first card that we're going to talk about, it's going to be in our number 10 spot. And number 10 is going to be in the crosshairs for three resources. So first has ambush, okay? And then it reads to say, choose a symbol, then remove any number of dice showing that symbol. And the reason why it's in our top 10, and it's in the 10th spot right now, and honestly, I see this card maybe moving further up the ladder, maybe to like a fourth or fifth spot. We'll see as Gen Con's going on, and we're seeing more of these constructed decks, more in a competitive setting with some great players. We'll see if this card gets some play. But right now, I feel it's really strong. And, and the reason why is you can come up with three resources pretty quick with the stuff that yellow gives you, whether that's Truce or Well Connected or Maz's Vault, or whether it's the resource that you're resolving off of a die that you find commonly in, in yellow dice. Whatever that reason is, or whatever you're doing to generate those resources, um, three is fairly easy to come by if you plan for this card, and it's very strong. Okay, so you're choosing a symbol. It doesn't have to be a symbol that's already there. It doesn't have to be a symbol that you know exists. You can just choose a symbol, then remove any number of dice showing that symbol. So it's just a, a, a big board wipe. And in other games like Magic and things like that, anytime you're removing more than two or three things, it's huge. And in this game, when you have characters that are typically activating with two dice to start or maxing out at five dice, you can simply remove three four or five of those dice off of aggro decks with three resources and that just is straight nope sorry you know all this stuff that you tried to play all these things you tried to do i'm i'm displacing it and getting rid of it completely off the field and that's huge and for three and being neutral it can be included in villain or in hero and i think it's really strong so that's why i feel it should be in the number 10 spot yeah like what i really like about the card is there are times in certain games when you know, your opponent will roll in, they will show damage, and you don't mitigate anything. You know, it, it might not be that threatening to you, uh, but your opponent assumes that you're just going to mitigate, you know, damage when it's showing. Uh, you know, then they focus up some things, maybe hit themselves with a reroll, and now they're showing, you know, six to ten damage uh, on the board. And then that's when you hit them with the, in the crosshairs. And like Ashton said, it completely wipes the board. Uh, I think it's 
you know, for, for the, the three resource cost, I do think um, you're getting your money's worth. Mm-hmm. And there is ways, you know, in, in today's meta and, you know, with cards like what like with cards that way the force is, you know, offering to us, um, we can certainly generate resources at a, at a faster rate. So I think in the crosshairs is certainly going to break through and like Ashton said, get a little bit uh, further up the ladder. Uh, but right now it's sitting on the outskirts and it's our number 10. All right, Ray. So I'll let you go ahead and read out our number nine card. So for number nine, so number nine, we have one that's going to uh, <laughs> cause a lot of arguments uh, on both sides uh, for and against it, uh, but that is Feel Your Anger. So it is a blue villain event that costs one resource, and it says count the number of blanks showing on an opponent's dice, then remove that many dice. So the reason this is in here is... Um, Dice saturation and flooding the board with as many dice as possible is always a strategy uh, that you can, you know, face up against. And the more dice you have in your pool, the more dice your opponent has in their pool, it, it's a common strategy. So it's statistically impossible not to roll blanks. You, your opponent is going to roll blanks. The problem I think some people have with this card is, you know, it, it's it's kind of a little bit of chance Mm -hmm. um it it's timing because you do have to have the one resource which like we said within the crosshairs and and you know the meta that we're in generating resources really isn't that big of a deal um or it seems to be a little bit easier but there have been times where i have had a feel your anger sitting in my hand um you know after two rounds and i'm just sitting there waiting and uh, I do want to say with this card, don't be afraid to take one dice. Don't be, you know, afraid to take two dice. Don't look for that big blowout, um, you know, because it could certainly do that for your opponent if they do ro- roll poorly and they hit four blanks, um, you know, with, you know, six dice that they rolled in. You know, it could certainly happen. Um, then you can certainly, you know, disrupt their entire turn. And the reason this is in here is because of the kind of potential upside of this card, but. The drawback is, you know, you can't determine when they're going to roll blanks. And that's why a lot of people have kind of a problem with feel your anger. And for me, so for it being in the number nine spot, it is only a villain. Okay. So we have kind of a little bit of limitation there, but it doesn't require you to spot anything or spot a color, which is nice. And, I, and that's kind of why I feel it should be in this top 10 spot. If you're ever playing feel your anger and you're playing against me, you're going to be able to use it all the time because that's all I ever <laughs> roll is blanks. And that's no joke. Like I've been so salty with that lately. And one of the things is, is when people were playing feel your anger back in the day. Okay. And I say back in your day, back in the day when let's say I was playing empire at war. Okay. They kind of stopped playing it towards the end. And then as uh, the sets kind of moved along and it got into the legacies and we started seeing Yoda builds and stuff, people were like, okay, this card's dead. You know, you got Yoda, everyone's playing Yoda, Yoda's got no blank sides, you know, it's not going to be very strong against character dice because everyone's playing Yoda and you only got two dice or maybe one die rolling out depending on what you're doing for vehicles or whatever the case may be. It kind of lost a lot of its power. But now with all the dice saturation, like Ray was saying, it has a place again, I feel. And it still does what the title of this card is, which is really make you angry. And when you're rolling out those two cards or those two dice or those three dice or those four dice on one character, then you roll out your other character hoping that you hit a focus or hoping to play a card next turn. And then your opponent basically makes all those dice go away and is mitigating that dice from you being able to do your combo. It really is upsetting. And you're doing all this for one resource. That's why I believe it, it, it deserves a place here is that it's one resource and it doesn't really have a cap of what it can remove. You do have to roll the blanks, okay? But it can remove the whatever the limit is of the blank, which is kind of cool. So the ceiling could be potentially high, but like Ray said, don't wait for that top ceiling. Just if you can get one or two dice, you're still getting rid of one or two dice for one resource. You know, that's never yep. bad. It's just that you're playing a card that has a lot of potential. Instead of running isolation or something or mislead or something all not along that line, you're playing something that has a lot of potential to resolve more. But if not, you're still removing that one dice for one. And that's that's really that's really good uh, assumption, and, and, and it's a really good play to do that. And, and Ray definitely hit that on the head, so. Yep. All right, so number nine. And again, guys, um, 
this is our opinion. We want to hear what you have to say. If you feel these cards are in wrong order, tell us why. You know, this let's talk is is essentially a let's talk. Like, we're giving you our opinions and giving you our ideas, but we need your help to become better players. And we're trying to do what we can to help you guys become better players by giving you our thoughts and our ideas, whether it's on our Discord channel talking about deck builds or whether it's on our Patreon page going over further discussions. Let's talk about this stuff. Let's let's uh, get this, this, this comment really building inside of the YouTube comments. And then if you're listening to this on the podcast, please make sure that you talk about it on the Facebook page when we go ahead and link this up there as well. So don't be shy. So number yep. eight. All right. So am I reading this off? Uh, yeah, go for it. All right. So we have doubt for zero. Doubt for zero is villain only. Reroll an opponent's die. Then that opponent either resolves that die or removes it. So this will have a place in a lot of villain decks. A lot of villain aggro decks that you see, okay, which are really common right now, um, have a problem still kind of with resources. So we're running things like Chance Cube to try to generate that. You know, we're still running some of the oldie but goodies as far as, you know, truce and things like that. But the reason why this card is in the top eight spot and in the top 10 overall is because it's zero. Zero mitigation will always be good. Zero mitigation will always have a place. It doesn't cost you anything. And on top of that, this is gray. So if you're playing against the, you know, all feared and talked about Kylo as far as the color calling, this no one calls gray. This is something that's going to really be in your benefit. I mean, they know that if you're going to be playing gray cards, unless you're going against the Jawa deck, you're only going to have four possibly that you're running or maybe six, depending um, as more of like a meta call. So they're not going to ever call gray. So you're usually going to be safe with this card being in your hand. Um, it's about timing. And it's about playing this against the right dice, okay? So you want to play this against a die that has preferably a lot of modified sides or against dice that maybe has 50% chance of rolling damage and you really don't want it to, you really don't want your opponent to resolve the damage, so you get rid of that damage die, okay? You may not necessarily want to use this on a die that, you know, 60% of the sides are going to be something that's going to potentially benefit them. Use it on something that's a guarantee or if you're in a tight spot, then go for the luck, you know? Um, but that's why I feel it should be in the number eight spot. Yep. I, uh, I know a lot of people might get annoyed by this as well and think that it shouldn't even be on this list because it's just kind of a, a zero cost mitigation card, but right. I think it's really strong. And I think like Ashen said, if you use it in the right spot with against the right dice, then you, you, you know, you're going to remove that dice and it, the only bad characters to use this against are, you know, the Yodas of the world, um, the Boba Fats, because it's never good to doubt a Boba Fat dice. Um, there, there's a lot of potential here. But what Ashton was saying, as far as use it against the proper dice, things like uh, Shoto lightsabers, yeah. ancient lightsabers, mm -hmm. Maul's lightsaber, um, those, you know, three, they have really big upsides, but the base sides are very weak. And there's and then, more of them. Yep, Usually. and there, there, there's yeah, there's there's a few more like the ancient lightsaber is only has you know fifty percent damage side, but it's a one a one and a modified three. Right. Um, same thing with the Shoto, uh, it's got the modified two, so it's you could certainly you know take the good with the bad because they can't resolve the the highest potential of that dice. But you know, watch where where you're playing this. Like Ashen said, I mean, it's it's free mitigation. I think I any deck that I'm building that's not like a Mother Talzin deck and it's villain, it's like an auto-include. It's just mm -hmm. decent removal to get yourself out of a jam. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so let's go ahead and power through for the number seven spot. Ray, go ahead, buddy. So number seven is kind of more on this list because of the current meta and what we th see things are, are kind of shaping up to be. Um, so it's going to be pinned down. So it's a neutral red card for one resource, and it says spot a vehicle to remove a die. So like I was saying with the current meta, a lot of people are creating now villain and hero vehicle decks in all types of variations, uh, different characters, uh, all types of pairings. I mean, it's... It really is like a, a rainbow of both characters and, you know, what type of vehicles you want to play. But pin down is truly a staple in all of these vehicle decks. So it, it deserves a spot and it deserves kind of this, um, I guess, you know, upper middle spot because it, it's not the best mitigation. It's one for one die. And the stipulation is you do have to have a vehicle down. But 
with so many vehicle decks, um, you know, prevalent in the meta, it's it's in pretty much all of these decks. So we, we thought it deserved a spot here, and you know, it's an auto include in these decks. And the thing about it is that I think of, and maybe I'm maybe a little bit more more ignorant to the removal of red, but red doesn't have a lot of removal. Like I, I know that you have things like honor guard, suppressive fire. You have things like best defense. Um, you have things like dug in and things that can help you um, shield up, or things like defensive stance that can remove it. But that's it. There's not like a cheap one cost removal other than pin down like with blue we get misled we get isolation you know with yellow we get electroshock and we get lothcat you know we get that cheap removal but for red there's not a bunch so for a one cost pin down spot a vehicle to remove a die and it's neutral i think it deserves a spot you know because it is a yep. cheap mitigation card for red and that's the thing we have to think about is when you're building decks and you're building characters you have to think about their abilities. Like DJ is something that a lot of people are talking about. Me and Ray are trying different things that are, you know, good builds or bad builds. We're experimenting and we're trying to find out what we can include with the character, okay, to have the optimal amount of versatility with cards. And that's what you have to think of when you're building is where am I getting most of my mitigation? You know, blue, you're getting a lot of beat down you know aggressive damage you know yellow you're getting a lot of control um red you're getting like a lot of vehicles and a lot of things like that but for red to have a one cost mitigation this is it and that's why it's here i believe so yep and if you get a pod racer out you know for one resource you pin downs ready to go that's right that's right pod racer man ray's making me a believer <laughs> All right, number six. So number six, I'll read this one out, and this is a, a favorite, I think, for most people. It is one cost, so one resource, into the garbage chute. And yes, uh, Harrison Ford does look like Will Ferrell. Exhaust one of your characters <laughs> to remove up to two dice showing damage. Okay, so guys, keep in mind that if you see the, the blaster, you see the lightsaber, you see the grenade, if you see anything that shows that, even in the older printed cards, if it only shows the blaster or the melee, it's symbolizing damage. Okay, so if the symbol you're looking for isn't there, that's what this is about. So for one resource, you exhaust one of your characters to remove up to two dice showing damage. It's for hero, okay? It is gray. All right, so gray is a plus. Again, we have cheap removal for one. Okay, so being gray can fit in any kind of, you know, color that you're running with characters. But what makes this so great is the widespread of characters we have now. You know, the widespread of characters is becoming very popular. It's very needed. The, the creators of the game want games to last five, four or five rounds. Okay, so playing more characters, having larger health pools. There's more to this game than just activating rolling out dice. Obviously you need that, but there's times when you can use your extra little weenie character to, you know, become this defense, whether it's using guard abilities or whether it's exhausting him to remove up to do two dice showing damage. So this is one of those cards that's situational. Okay. But it's always good. Like if you got a little, one die character you're rolling out like a Jawa, or you're rolling out like a trooper, you're rolling out, you know, let's say um, like the Jedi partisan. Obviously you have those, those abilities you can get, but in those particular decks that are three characters, you have other things you're going after than just trying to beat them up. And this card locks out two dice. That's huge. Okay. Yep. Um, and it's any dice. It's not a character dice. It's anything showing damage. And that's, that's why I think it deserves a spot. Yeah, it's it's usually in decks that are a little bit more, um, you know, late to mid range, uh, things like mill and vehicles. So it's taking more of a defensive stance where, you know, they really don't care about a character and they're just looking to mitigate you and, you know, push the game even further. So that's where Into the Garbage Chute really finds a home. You'll commonly see this in vehicle decks, mill decks. Um, you know, there, there are some big little decks where you, we have, you know, one big strong character and one character that really doesn't do much other than add a little bit maybe color or uh, health pool to the overall deck. And, you know, people have no problem garbage shooting that character. But, you know, you certainly have to do this, you know, and, and, and pick your spot and, and do it uh when you really don't care about exhausting that character. So there have been times where, you know, you're really up against it late game and maybe you're two characters left and you just have to kind of bite the bullet and exhaust a character that might be a little productive for you. Um, maybe do some damage or gain some resources, uh, produce shields. But, 
you know, if it means staying in the fight for another round or just a little bit longer, then, uh, you know, it's, it's always a good idea to throw him in the garbage chute. Yeah, I mean, that shuts down three melee damage from a Dooku die, or let's say it shuts down, you know, the, the, the common range die that's just flooding the map, you know, save yourself four damage, which is almost half the health of a character. You know, you and typically in three character decks or larger, you're kind of playing more of a slower deck. Um, five die villains pretty fast, but you can also slow play it. And one of those times exhausting the character, like Ray was saying, is going to save you a game. It's going to save you a character. And that's why this card's so great. Yep. All right. So number five, Ray, that's all you, buddy. So number five on our list is the best defense, and it is a red villain event that costs one resource. It is deal one of your red characters three damage to remove up to two of an opponent's dice. So I do like how those two were kind of back to back on our list. Um, the best defense gets the edge solely because it can be any dice that your opponent is showing you know into the garbage chute is great it doesn't deal the damage to your character uh you do lose basically an activation from a character that round but it doesn't deal damage to that character this is you know villain they're always a little bit more all or nothing mm -hmm. and you really have to understand the best time to play this card uh, because if you just keep, you know, rattling off the best defenses on your characters, it, it, you're just helping your opponent win even more. But if they're showing like six damage, uh, five damage between two dice, that would probably be a good spot to, to pop a best defense. Mm -hmm. um, again, it, it really doesn't matter um, the dice that you pick. So it, it's very versatile. Um, similar to where you can use in the garbage chute if you have kind of some some red characters that are, are sitting on the sides of your really big character in like a three wide deck and you have no problem putting you know three damage into that character and just using them kind of like a meat shield um you know to keep the damage away from your more important characters you can certainly do that um i've been running the uh five die free for all that was kind of made famous by jonathan magnuson uh at worlds and it runs the Stormtrooper, Elite Talzin, and Elite Bala, and you really want to keep your opponent off of Talzin and Bala. So you have no problem throwing, you know, three damage into the Stormtrooper. It's situations like that that make this card so strong, and we're seeing kind of a resurgence of this card with Kylo Price. Because, you know, Kylo is your, your main beater of, of the deck. Um, Price can certainly do some fun things and, and finish off games, but if you want to keep that damage away from Kylo, you can certainly put the three into, into price. So that's why I think it, it kind of edges uh, into the garbage chute, and uh, it's our number five. Yeah, and I, I like the fact of the imagery here. Like, So it works very well with troopers, and we happen to have troopers as the imagery here. And it's and it's cool because you know troopers are these force, this army that kind of invades, and they invade by being these meat shields, okay? And they flood them in, and, they, and they're and they out there just to keep the main characters from dying. And, it, and it's really cool because it really works well with, with these troopers in general you know these are the things that are out there that may have two blank sides okay but they're there to do a lot of damage and you can use them there to just make them meat shields okay and a lot of times like he was saying when you're playing something you know and you're and you're and you're you're trying to have this trooper in there for additional damage as a meat shield kill them put the three damage into them kill them and and save yourself you know from from additional four or six damage on your main characters that's what it's there for don't be shy a lot of times people are afraid to use best defense and like ray was saying earlier and, and a lot of things that we talk about with the price and kylo deck is you can start off with two shields you can start off with doing three damage to price to mitigate two dice and you're only doing one to her because two shields is absorbing it you know, you have things like Witch's Magic you can use. You have things that you can do to heal some of that three damage off. So even though the damage is there, don't feel like it has to stay there. You know, work around it, strategize towards it, make it work for you. Um, and that's why a lot of people are kind of scared of it. That's why I was scared to use it. I'm like, why the heck would I want to, you know, kill a quarter of my character's life? Why would I want to kill a character to save myself two, two dice? And that's because those dice can do six damage. 
You know, those dice can yep. do four damage on average. You know, you're saving yourself four damage for three. You're saving yourself half the damage by taking three instead of six. And if it means killing Price to save Kylo, great. You're not starting off with, you know, six damage on Kylo next turn. You're not starting off with four damage on Kylo next turn. You know, he's not half dead. Um, you can get that additional action. So think about it as far as if you're playing best defense, are you playing a deck that's fast or if you're playing a deck that's slow? If you want that battlefield or if you don't, um, so you can try to absorb it with shields, take those shields instead of the damage because you know you're going to play best defense next turn um things like that so it's a great card um it's definitely two it's an auto include of two cards in the kyla price deck that i play because it helps me that much and i think it's a great spot for number five yeah so and if you want to talk about thematics of it like you were saying with the stormtroopers it's pretty cool with the stormtrooper being at seven uh health mm -hmm. that they could they could technically absorb two uh of the best defense right and still have one health so that is cool um, I, I never really made the correlation with the art and the, the character. That's pretty That's pretty good. <laughs> so here we go. Number four, and I'll go ahead and read this one out. So this is uh, one resource. Okay, we have another neutral gray card, and it's called Flank. So you're going to play Flank only if you have more ready characters than an opponent. Remove one of that its opponent's die. So the great thing about this card is it's not a restriction to a character die or an upgrade die. You don't have to spot anything, okay? But you do have to make sure that you have more ready characters than an opponent. So it's in the timing, but it is neutral, so it fits in a lot of spots. That's why it's in this number four spot, because we're getting close to the top three. Um, but again, this is a card that I've seen played since the beginning of me playing this game. It's always been there. It hasn't gone away. The three character decks are running it absolutely running it and they're running two of them because it is very impactful um when you're slow playing and you're trying to really push your opponent into a, a corner or trying to get them to resolve or do these certain steps it's a great way of removing that die with no restrictions it's as simple as that and being that one resource cost i mean it, it definitely makes it spot here in the top 10. yep uh, the reason, again, this is similar to like pin down, is because there's so many three wide decks going around. You know, we have Snoke and, you know, it's his supporting characters. Uh, we have five die villain. The vehicle decks run three characters. Everything is kind of gearing towards a, a three character type of meta. And I'd be really surprised of, you know, how many three characters are, are in the top cut at Gen Con, because I think it's going to be a lot more than it was previously. Um, so I, that's why flank is, is certainly on the rise. A lot of these cards in here, you know, are, are more because the current meta is kind of, pushing in that direction mm -hmm. not so much for for the raw you know power to remove dice so i want you guys just get to consider that we're kind of using this as as like a tool for both you know experienced players to get a pulse on the meta and what you know mitigation that they can anticipate to see but also to newer players when they're going through you know the stack of, of new cards that they just got or uh, a two-player set and it might include some of these cards then um you know Pick them out, identify them, and see that they're on this list, and um, kind of understand the, the the reason behind that and why that they're 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 so good. So, um, yeah, this is more of a meta call and, and the direction that the the current meta is going in. All right, race. So uh, you get number three, buddy. So number three is something I'm extremely excited about. I think we may have overvalued it, but uh, at the same time, I I think Gen Con will be kind of the the the, the measuring stick mm -hmm. of how good this will this will truly be so it's uh suppressive fire it is a support so now we have mitigation and support form it is a zero cost support which is awesome and it is hero red it says after a character is activated you may spend one resource and discard the support from play to remove one of its character dice so the reason me and ashton are so excited about this card and many others have been is it's the first time in Star Wars Destiny where you can um, interact or take an, you know, quote unquote action or do something during your opponent's turn. So that's a huge step in the game of Star Wars Destiny. We have never been able to do anything like that. It's 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 a game of actions where, you know, you take a turn, I take a turn. It's very, um, you know, sequence based in, in that respect. But to be able to interrupt or um, you know 
like me and Ashner are Magic the Gathering players to like play an instant mm -hmm. um, and kind of disrupt your opponent's turn. Yeah. And then immediately after this is done, you take your turn. Uh, you take your action. It's uh, it's it's pretty awesome that we're moving in that in that direction. So I'm a huge fan of suppressing fire. I think that it really pushed, um, you know, hero red to the forefront as far as um, you know incentivizing people to play it a little bit more because it got a, you know a new uh, piece of mitigation that that might help out a little bit better. You know, Ashton said. Um, uh, you know, ways back, I think it was like around number eight or nine, um, that hero, uh, that red in general is just, it's lackluster when it comes to mitigation. But something like this, I think it was a huge step forward. Yeah, I think suppressive fire and honor guard are great for hero. And it has that great Django feel. Like Ray's a big fan of Django. And and I, I love the ability and, and the activation that he gets when your opponent activates. And I remember when I first started playing, I played against a Django, uh, what was it, Django Veers deck. And I was like, man, this is really cool. This is neat how it does that. And then I, I looked for more cards that did that kind of activated ability, and there wasn't anything. And I was like, oh, that sucks, because I come from playing Magic, right, and, and to Destiny, like, I want to get back into a card game. I, you know, I have some time, and <laughs> somehow all that went away very quickly, but I have some time, I want to get back into a card game, and I was like, I like this kind of chain reaction, or you do something, I immediately do something to throw you off your game, and Django was awesome with that. And then now, it's been quite some time, but now we have another zero cost support, another card that actually will let you do something the moment an opponent activates and that's great so it makes your opponent really focus on your resources when this is out it lets this be a great card to kind of slow play like hey i'm gonna play suppressive fire just to kind of get something out there to kind of mess with them a little bit and it's going to make your opponent think should i upgrade first or should because a lot of times people just activate out their characters use their resources to maybe play an upgrade later in the in that turn or use those resources to be able to pay for their their base sides that require a pay side they may wait a little bit it may save you some time you know it gets in their head i like cards that get in people's heads and make them think um and that's why i have a lot of appreciation for this and it's also another red hero card that gives us some mitigation which i feel is great so yeah I mean, I just like that you can have this in your opening hand and say you do want to slam down some some upgrades first and, you know, just with with having to pay the one to, to really get the the effect of this card um, and it's just not in, in your curve or, you know, um, you're just not seeing the, the resources there. You can slam it down for zero resources and then, you know, let it ride into the next round. And then, you know, you can kind of reassess where you're at if you want to throw a cheaper upgrade down and and save that resource i just really like the fact that you can put it down for free and then figure out the resource either later or leave it up for a later round and it's not unique so you can have two so yep. that's two character dice so yeah and i have seen like um battlefields like docking bay mm -hmm. um kind of be on the rise like when i'm playing uh at locals or t on tts people are certainly doing the honor guard suppressive fire and then docking bay uh as the battlefield to kind of bring them back from the discard pile and play them at, you know have one sitting out there every turn right and where honor guard costs you an action to mitigate a die okay you're paying that one resource to have it out, but this is zero and you're paying that one resource to immediately do it and still have your activation or still have your action, excuse me. And that's why this trumps honor guard. Okay, so you're still paying the one like honor guard, but you still get an action after this happens because it doesn't use your action to do it. It's based off of their activation. And that's they're great combos, they're great together. I think that that was on purpose and uh, I think it definitely helps red out for sure. Yeah. Yep. And Honor Guard is restrictive to just damage. So mm -hmm. this can be, I mean, You're this right. can hose a Yoda dice. It mm -hmm. can it can grab anything. A Snoke dice showing two resources, whatever, Focus. or two uh, focuses, whatever you want. Yep, that's right. All right, so I'll read off uh, number two here. So number two, in our number two spot here, we have Force Illusion. So this is a card that's been played by many. This is a card that will be played until it cycles out this is a card i'm sure will probably get reprinted i think it's something that is going to stay in the game because they want the the rounds to last longer they want games to last longer and this definitely does that just like second chance would um it's a one cost resource for solution it is an upgrade ability okay and it also has the the wording of before attached character takes damage 
you may discard cards from the top of your deck equal to the damage to block it. Then discard this upgrade from play. And it's neutral. So Force Illusion, one resource. It's a great way to mitigate damage. Just make sure you take your time and do not rush. Make sure you play it at the right time. Make sure you count your cards in your deck. It has cost me before, um, whether it's a tournament or at a locals or, you know, I think it actually cost me one game at my Miami regionals. I was two cards off. So actually, if I was able to block the, that two damage, I would have had the next round to be able to win the game. And I lost because I did not count the cards in my deck. And that's just a rookie mistake. You have to be prepared for those things. So as, if you're playing Force Illusion, just make sure you think outside the box a little bit. Make sure that you you know count the cards that's in your deck. Take the moment to do that. There's nothing wrong with doing that in this game. Just obviously don't look at the cards. You know, Make sure that you ask your opponent that they're okay with it. And make sure that you have enough cards to block that damage. That's very important. Yep. It's uh, it certainly can uh, burn you, like Ashton said. But the thing I like about this card, and I do agree with you when you you know you're saying it, it could be reprinted. I think that, that would be really smart by uh, by FFG, and um, I, I just think it's an overall fair card. It it doesn't do you know a, a ridiculous amount for for you. I mean, it can. It, its potential is certainly there, but you know, for one resource. It's usually going to block anywhere from two, which is commonly found on most um, character dice as far as damage sides go, two to upwards of you know six as long as um, you know those sides are modified, and that's common. So, you know, I, like I said, I just think it's a very fair card. You know, you're going to lose some cards in your deck, and that can hurt you later down the road. Um, but it's just uh, I, I like that it can block such a wide variety of damage. And then uh, one thing I wanted to point out, because you know this is more for the, the newer players, is you can't kind of divide up the damage. So if a dice of you know three value of damage is coming at you, you can't say, I'll take, uh, you know, I'll take only one and I'll uh, discard my force illusion and then right. discard the top two. You know, everything has to be together. Uh, the reason I say that is because it did come up um, when I was kind of teaching some newer players. So anyone who's new to the game or, or um, isn't familiar with this card, just be aware of that. Uh, each dice is a different set of damage, um, no matter if it's the same uh, symbol. So just be aware of that. Uh, but like I said, I just think Force Illusion is such a fair card and should certainly get reprinted in, in later sets. Yeah, we have things that give um, us the ability to deal unblockable damage, which gets around this also. Um, so, I mean, it is very well balanced and it is neutral. So, you know, it's a card that can favor um, a lot of different decks and a lot of different builds. And I think it is something that's going to be a staple. You know what's crazy, though? I just realized the artwork on this card. Like, I've never really paid attention to it, but the mob of the bounty hunters or whoever these people are in the background, they're shooting at the shadow. See that? Yeah. I never noticed, yeah, I've noticed that. this. I've never, I've never like paid attention to it. I just kind of like looked. I at don't it like the it. new art. Yeah. On that. Yeah. The, uh, yeah. I've that, seen that, it. Like whatever the the giveaway or mm -hmm. the participation. I didn't yeah. really like that art. But I just noticed it. Like there's a shadow in the background and he's like sneaking by. That's really cool. Anyway. <laughs> all right. So the number one spot. So here we go. So what? <laughs> what is the number one spot? What does Ray and Ashton feel? is the number one spot. And this is a card that I don't want to be in the spot. This is a card that I really um, tried to talk to Ray about and said, you know, is it still here? <laughs> Does it still need to be here? Is there something else we can think of? Is there an out of, out of box idea? Like Ray says, I like to get cute a lot. Like I like to do things, I like to try cards that could be good, but aren't an obvious good card. You know, things that you have to work at to make happen. Um, and, and it's one of those things where I just didn't want it to be this spot and and it, it does still deserve this area and i think it will always be the number one until we maybe see what the new mitigation is from the next across the galaxy set and uh ray i'll let you read out the card for this one all right i'll let you get the number yeah, he, one spot he had to fight me about this one but it's still <laughs> the champion of mitigation it is easy pickings so it shouldn't be too much of a shock and i'm sure most of you are familiar with this card it is an uncommon from legacies for one resource it is a yellow 
hero event that says spot a yellow character to remove two dice showing the same symbol and value, ignoring modifiers and resource costs. So the reason this card is so relevant is because <laughs> it's just funny because everyone first thought, when the heck is that going to happen? Yeah. That seems too situational. Mm -hmm. But then if you think about deck building and um, running characters at elite every time you run a character at elite you're leaving them susceptible to an easy pickings you know you can certainly roll out and uh hit you know two sticks on on both of their their dice and uh, before easy pickings was around that was a really um good thing that, that felt like a good roll to you um but the kind of sad part now is that we live in a world with easy pickings mm -hmm. and the reason I feel like this deserves a number one spot, um, not only is it going to happen, uh, not only is it going to happen more often than you think, but people, when they sit across from a yellow hero deck, they immediately understand that, you, that easy pickings is in that deck. And just the fear of, you know, rolling and, and hitting uh, two of the same symbol, uh, it makes people play a little bit differently. Um, you know, you'll commonly see people when they're playing against a hero yellow deck, if they have access to a focus, um, you know, the, and one thing is showing a value of two, whether that be damage or whatnot, they will focus the other one to a one side mm -hmm. just to play around easy pickings because they don't want to get hit with it. Uh, it could certainly blow out, you know, your damage production for the turn. Um, and it's jammed in so many good decks. Uh, I really think that that's the reason why hero yellow, uh, has gotten oh, such yeah. a boost mm -hmm. is because of cards like this. Yeah, absolutely. And it's it's one of those things where it's going to force your opponent to go after your your yellow hero first. It's going to force your opponent, like he was saying, to make sure that they don't have matching sides out. And I, I've always understood this card is is a great card. I'm not saying it's not. That's why it's here in the in the number one spot. Is this a collective group of what me and Ray both feel is is great? But it's one of those things where I I don't want it to be good. I want I want something else. And I feel like it's still a spot. It's still limited of two dice. It's still limited showing the same symbol and value. And I feel like, you know, we're seeing a lot more variety now than we used to. Um, so, you know, we'll see how this changes. It's it's something that's going to be included for a long time. This is something that a lot of other content creators have also uh, voted as the top mitigation card. And it's and that's that's been going on for months. I mean, this card has been doing great ever since Legacy dropped. It's been in that top one spot, at least in the top three, I guarantee, for anyone that's ever done any reviews of cards. And it's just, it's going to be there. So new players, okay, if you're getting into Destiny and, and you've somehow found Jackman Games and, and you've got introduced to myself, Ray, and Kevin, you know, this is something that we're giving to you to make sure that this is in your deck. If you're playing Yellow Hero, put this in your deck, okay? So there, we've you only got 28 cards to worry about now. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, just that that's just what you need to know. And if you're looking at, at characters to play and what you should start off if you're a new player, just play a Yellow Hero. Just pick one, you know, it, it's it's something that you want to experiment with and it gets you up in that more competitive uh, area. But this is uh, definitely deserving the number one spot so far. Yep. Good yep. old easy pickings. <laughs> All right. So, guys, thank you so much for joining us for this video. The last part of this video is us going through uh, what we want to call the honorable mentions. Um, we have some cards here that we want to talk about uh, briefly. We may not go into as much in-depth discussion of the cards, but these are some cards we feel that need to be talked about and some things that uh, you guys should be including in your decks. And if you're not, try them out because I think that you guys will be very happy with the results. Um, so the first card, uh, Ray, whenever you're ready, I'll let you read that one out. All right, first one is Decisive Blow. So it is a three resource cost. It's neutral, so that's really good. And it says, resolve one of your dice showing melee to remove all of the character dice that that damage was just dealt to. This text is really small, so I had to ad lib right. there a little bit. <laughs> um, but <laughs> this uh, this card got play in uh, decks like Stairs. Yep. It was made kind of famous by um, Edwin Chen because he threw it into his um, Kylo Anakin deck that took worlds. And a lot of people, uh, you know, this card really wasn't on their radar. And then once Edwin kind of released his, his deck list, they saw uh, how good Decisive Blow could be. So I think it deserves a, a mention here. Um, I've never really played with it, but uh, I know that it's gained a lot of popularity. 
Yeah, so so Bobby Sapphire is where I kind of first experienced this, and I I came in this game after this set, after Spirit, and uh, I didn't really look at a lot of the Awakening or the Spirit. I kind of was focused more on that set and doing little things with that and trying to understand the game. And this is a card that I just didn't really think much of until I saw the stairs being played and I saw Bobby Sapphire, you know, including this in the deck and why it's good. I think he even did an article on it and how impactful it was. Uh, this is something that you kind of run a one of because it is kind of situational. You have to have some th certain things lined up to where you can deal that one damage. So if you're going to use like a Frighten or something along that lines to remove the shields to get that damage to guarantee to go through, that's kind of the combo you would want to run with this. But the crazy thing is, is it removes all character and upgrade dice from a character you just dealt damage to and that's huge that just shuts them down so you remove the shields they roll out you already have your damage sitting on the field you do that damage and they remove all their die and that really hurts especially when you're going against uh, two character pairings so if the meta is a lot of two character pairings and a lot of aggressive decks or whatever the case may be it doesn't even have to be aggro decks just something that loads up on a lot of dice and you have that die saturation in the field this is great to shut that down so i definitely think it needs to be mentioned here yep all right, next card is Entangle for two resources. It is a yellow neutral event. Spot a yellow character to remove up to two dice, showing a combined value of three or less. So this is a special and a two range, a special and a two melee. This is a one melee, um, and this is a you know two melee. However you want to do the combined value, um, you can typically remove two dice all the time, no problem. Finding that three value is pretty easy, I'd say, right? I mean, I haven't had a lot of problems with it. Have you, Ray? No, I, I'm not a huge fan of Entangled just because the decks I want to play it mm -hmm. in, it seems overcosted. It is expensive. But, you know, it's a guarantee of basically two dice. It, it's rare that your opponent rolls like two threes and you can only grab one of them. Um, but, you know, this can grab specials. It can grab, you know, the ideal situation is like a two and then a one, obviously. Um, but... You know, you could certainly do uh, – when I first read this card, I thought it was like, um, you know, three or less. Like, uh, I can grab as many as I can for three or less. And I was like, oh, you know, up to two dice. So um, I have kind of fallen off in Tangle a little bit um, just because the, the cost of it and, you know, the stipulation behind it, it's kind of got like three kind of hang-ups for me. The cost, then you got to spot a yellow, and then – the combined. You can't, yeah, you can't always guarantee a combined value. I mean, it, it's usually online. Like, I don't want to discourage people. It's a great card still. But, um, you know, I don't play it very frequently. So it, it's it's definitely good in, like, a DJ deck. It's definitely good because you're trying to load up a deck. If you're going to play, like, a DJ control, it's great because it gives you another mitigation card that you can play. Um, so it gives you that additional card in your arsenal that can trigger his ability for removing dice. Um, but the worst thing about this card is the fat cosplay boba. That is, like, <laughs> like I mentioned to Ray before, like, that boba. Like, I'm a huge fan of boba, and so is Ray. And that is just terrible. Like, it looks like an obese discolored homemade suit you know it's just terrible like i don't, I don't it, know i mean it's definitely like some watercolors or something <laughs> like that but a deck that this works really well in is like yoda hondo like they mm -hmm. love this card oh yeah this works uh, well there too yeah all right so we're going to move to the third card and uh the third card is zero resources it is a yellow villain event and it is, he doesn't like you, remove one of your dice to remove an opponent's die. So, Ray, go ahead and tell me what you think about this, man. So, um, similar to like cards like Doubt, anytime I'm running yellow villains in my decks, mm -hmm. um, this is like an auto-include. Right. Um, I hate that it costs zero because I really wanted it to be in five-die villain. It's just such a good card uh, because that saturates the... Uh, you know, the, the field with so many dice and I can definitely find one I don't care about, but you know, the, the zero resource cost is awesome. Um, the only drawback is you have to have, you know, some dice in the pool to actually play this. So that falls under the rule of, you know, you must satisfy as much as possible. Um, and the stipulation is you must rem remove one of yours. I like that. Um, you get to pick which one you remove and then you know, you, you tell your opponent which one they have to remove. So it's just really strong. And like Ashen said before, like zero cost mitigation, um, no matter what it is, will always have a place. You notice how all the good cards have flavor text? 
I don't know why that is, but it's like, I think that's the trick. I think FFG is trying to tell us something. Like, if it has flavor text, play it. Anyway, fourth card. All right, this one's yours, Ray. Go ahead. So uh, fourth card is overconfidence. For one resource, you get a blue neutral event. It says spot a blue character to reroll dice, uh, up to two dice. Um, then remove the dice showing the lowest value. So me and Ashton have talked about this. I think it's losing a little bit of favor just mm -hmm. because of the spot blue yeah. right now. Um, people are you know, kind of staying away from mono blue decks. That's where it really shined. Um, if you had a, a mono blue deck, you know, stairs. Um, if you were running like Luke 3 and Ray right now, you know, you're going to want to throw two copies of Overconfidence in. Um, I really like... I, I like what they're going for in the sense that you get to interact with two different dice for one resource cost. But there has been times where, you know, you, you'll play an overconfidence and you understand for that moment that that damage isn't going to be there, but they're going to reroll one of the dice and it could be a better value um, than, than the combined value of those two dice. Uh, <laughs> or it could get worse for your opponent. Um, we saw uh, Mods Utsin. Um, who was number two at Worlds um, throughout the live stream on FFG? He frequently would pick one of his dice and one of his opponent's dice and then re roll them. It's a risky move. It was certainly something that I hadn't seen before, but you know, I could certainly see how that would feel really bad that you just paid one resource, you re rolled one of their dice, maybe increasing the value or uh, at least high enough to remove one of your dice. Um, so it just seemed like a lose-lose a uh, for me. But it, it certainly has a place. And, um, you know, it's still a good card. I don't want to, to deter you away from it. But just understand it. It's, it's not ideal, you know, guaranteed removal. Yeah, for, for players that play this card, these are players that have it there for a reason. It's not just there for mitigation. It's there because it's going to benefit them in other ways. So if, like, like Maz, if he was playing this card, there's a reason. He was picking a certain die that he knew was going to have a better chance. You're going to pick a die that has more higher valued sides. So you know that your chance of, of rolling a higher number is inevitable. Okay. So that's why you would do that because you know, you're going to have a chance of doing it. So not only are you re-rolling a die that you don't particularly care the side of if it's yours, but you're also re-rolling an opponent's die that you know is going to have a less likely chance of rolling a higher number and you're mitigating their die at the same time. But you have to spot a blue character. That's very restrictive. Um, and mono blue just is still being weakened because of Kylo. Um, so, but again, if you try the strategy, just make sure you choose the right die. It can work. Just make sure it has more uh, sides that are valued higher. So to, yeah. to go to the next card, uh, we have a one resource cost gray event hero card uh, with one of my favorite characters of Star Wars. And uh, that is Ahsoka, Way of the Light. So remove a non-hero die. So Ray, talk to me a little bit about this one, man. So I have seen... A lot of people talking about this card, and I think it's gaining a lot of popularity. I was just recently with um, Original from Hourbrook Gaming. Um, those guys are awesome, very knowledgeable players, and you know, very sound deck builders. And I give them, you know, all the props. I, I really like those guys over there. And um, I was talking to Original about. Uh, bringing back R2P2 because that's one of my favorite decks of all time. And he was talking about mitigation and how it's, you know, struggles with good mitigation um, being both, you know, blue melee, um, you know, partially blue melee, and then red hero. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about things like suppressive fire and also way of the light. Now, at first glance, you might think that this is very restrictive, but it's not. Um, a lot of dice out there that are going to be played in uh, good decks and, and meta decks, a lot of the dice may be coming from neutral um, upgrades. Uh, you have your heirlooms, you know, your shodos, your ancients, uh, your vibro knives. Everything like that is is all neutral upgrades. Um, you know, the list goes on and on. This completely hoses uh, Hondo if you yeah. <laughs> want to get rid of a Hondo dice because that's a neutral dice. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, if you're playing against a villain deck, it's completely turned on uh, because all they're going to have in their deck is villain or neutral dice. So 
I think it has a little bit more value than just the the small sentence that it reads on there, which is just yeah. remove a non hero dice. So, you know, I think a lot of people are excited about this and and see the potential here. I think you got it, man. I think that's a great explanation of it. I think we're going to see it being played more and more and more. Again, it gives us another great card in our arsenal against uh, color calling. Um, and there's a lot of neutral characters coming out. Um, so one of the neutral characters that has recently been spoiled is the new Han Solo from the next set coming out across the galaxy. So he is neutral. Um, there's other cards that we're going to see that are neutral. Um, so, you know, it's going to have some play. It's not going to be just put away. Uh, Way of the Dark is also another card that we'll see if any, anybody does anything with. It's not as as uh, awesome as, as Way of the Light, but it does have some uh, nice little abilities it does. So check that out. But it's not on this list. <laughs> I don't know so, why you like Way of the Dark. <laughs> all right, so zero cost. I like the cute cards. All right, so zero cost blue hero event pacify so a lot of these people um watching this video i'm sure you guys have started hearing more about this it removes a character die then gives that character two shields so don't be afraid to remove your character die as like a caution ability or something of that sort to give your character two sh shields but more so it gives you more blue removal at zero cost for like a blue hero deck against your opponent if they have shields so then you're you're removing a die and if they already have shields you're giving them you know maybe one shield if they already have two because maybe they claimed the battlefield um, or they you know they chose to use your battlefield at the time you took the uh you know spot a battlefield to start your taking your your turns for the game let's say that they're already sitting with those two shields that's a great card to have in your starting hand to remove a character die and you're only giving them one um there's ways of playing this and then still using cards like frighten and things of that sort to remove all the shields there's ways around it um and i think a lot of people are like why am i gonna give my opponent two shields it works for you too and i like cards that are very situational like that so it benefits you or your opponent whenever you need it and based on how the game plays going and it's zero so it's zero and it's very situational but it helps both sides and i definitely think it needs to be mentioned i think this is a great card yeah it's um it's great for removal and mill. Um, yeah. You know, mill mill doesn't care about giving um, additional health, additional shields to an opponent. So, you know, you can certainly remove any dice, and it's not restricted to just damage. Uh, you know, you can hit them specials and uh, focuses, whatever you need to hit, um, and then just give that that character, you know, two shields, and you know, you really don't care about it because you're going after their deck, uh, not their characters. Right. Right. All right, so to move on, to, we have two more left here. So to move on to the next card, uh, Ray, you want to read that one out or you want me to read out for you? Uh, read that one. That's really right. tiny. Yeah, that's why I was like. All right, so we have a one resource cost to play this yellow villain card, which is by any means, which is remove a die showing a value of two or more, then deal one indirect damage to yourself. So this is a card that we all have known and become to love very much if we're playing Afra because it fits very well, um, but it has a lot of other things it can do as well. So Ray, tell me a little bit about what you think about this card, man. Uh, I do like that FFG makes you know certain cards, and then you know th there's like direct counters to it. So mm -hmm. like uh, like we were talking about Way of the Light, like that's like a direct counter to Kylo Ren. It's gray, so he can't call it. And it can remove his dice. I look at something like this, and I think of like counters to these now huge vehicle decks uh, that are out there. And you know, vehicles are going to try to hit you know large sides. You know, this I just the first thing I think is like planetary bombardment, you know, like two or more. It's it's going to resolve a two or more side. Um, the the Hellfire Droid tank that's really popular right now. Um, a lot of vehicle decks are are having sides that that are a greater value than two. But the um, the the way that they put you know two or more is really important because most characters are going to have some value of two on mm -hmm. their their natural dice. So I, I really do like that. Um, I think it's a good card. I think it works perfectly with Afra, and, and I certainly see her on the rise. Um, but you know, it, it it finds a home in here as honorable mentions because with any deck that you're building, you know, you gotta kind of take the good with the bad, and you have to have a decent kind of mix of 
you know, some cheap and easy mitigation, some solid removal, um, some things that might be like on the fringe. I look at this as kind of on the fringe. It could certainly go into like any type of deck. Um, but you know, you need to have a wide variety of removal to kind of, uh, suit your needs. And I think that by any means could certainly fit in there. Yeah. And it's cheap, you know, and it works with yep. decks like, you know, DJ control and stuff like that. So you know, it's something that that indirect side can be moved over to a trooper or that indirect side can be moved over and, you know, you keep shields in your characters, you play around it, but it's one damage, you know, to remove a value of uh, two or more on your opponent's die. So, I mean, it's doing one damage, right? But it's right off the bat, at least minimal, saving you from taking one. Um, yep. So, you know, it's 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 kind of something that you have to think outside the box on, but I, I've definitely been seeing it get some more play here recently in a lot of decks and I've been playing with it as well. And it seems to always be working out for me. So, you know, it's cheap yeah. and it's good. It's like a direct reversal um, of like the misleads, the electro shocks mm -hmm. where it had to be like two, two or, or less. less. Yeah. Um, this just kind of flips it on its head and it says two or more. <laughs> so I, I would be kind of angry. I haven't played with this card too much, but I would be kind of angry if like just some rinky dink focus was sitting out there that can, you know, I don't know, just do something bad to me, like a discard or, or yeah, even like, I don't know, just something that is less than two that I'm really concerned about. And, uh, yeah, I can't mitigate it, but right. You know, whatever. Right. Like if you got a, if your opponent has like a focus out there and the planetary bombardment, it's not showing on the side they want and that, you know, that they could like tactical mastery to focus to planetary bombardment hit for six. It's like, ah, oh, I can't get rid of that focus, but if I could, I'd be sitting yep. good. But because I, it's two or more, I can't resolve that one focus. I know they're going to play tactical mastery. Crap. They got me, you know? And then like, it's yep. one of those situations like that where you wish you could get rid of that one focus because you know, they're going to action speed cheap. So yeah. All or right. like it doesn't, it doesn't hit specials. Like that bothers me a little bit. Yeah. Um, it's true because it does cost one. So, that would probably have been a better example than the whole focus route I was going down. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I think it's restrictive, and I think it can kind of burn you. But at the same time, you'd be like, oh, wow, this is great. You Definitely know? worth mentioning. That's for sure. Yep. All right, and our last card here is something that uh, me and Ray have liked for a while, and it's something that you see in mill decks as well. Um, it is four resources to play this hero event that is red in color. And it is emergency evacuation, which is remove all dice. And it does exactly that. So um, that's pretty good. I mean, it's something that definitely helps. You want to make sure that your opponent kind of plays their their actions and plays their upgrades and rolls out their dice before you kind of do your activation and roll out your dice, okay? But again, if you're playing like a mill deck, you're, there's even ways to still make this card work for you. But the fact that it's removing all dice is crazy. You know, I wish that this was something that you could use with DJ because that would be awesome <laughs> to remove like seven dice for seven damage. But, you know, unfortunately you can't. It is very expensive, but it's something to be mentioned because it, it has three words that just wipes the board. And uh, it's definitely something to think about. Yeah. Uh, so Menion Kroll was his name and he kind of like brought this card uh, to the forefront of most mill players minds with uh, his Yoda Riken deck or Riken. I feel like I always yep. say that wrong. That's my <laughs> that's my Jersey accent. So it it's just extremely powerful. I mean, to to know that, you know, you just wait until your opponent rolls in both their characters or all three of their characters and then just remove it all in one fail swoop. That four spot is is a spot that, you know, you really have to be conscious of when you're playing against mill players uh, because they have access to this, they have access to fallback, um, you know, so just be very conscious when they, they do hit four resources about how impactful, uh, you know, they can be towards your turn. Um, but yeah, it, it's a great card and I'll stir up the chat a little bit. It has the best artwork in Star Wars Destiny. Oh my gosh. Well, here's the thing. It is. Everybody it is loves it. It is done as far as like if you look at like like the the skin and the colors and the shading and stuff, it does look pretty decent, but it's just retarded. Like I don't know why. It's the worst. <laughs> look at her hand. It looks like a claw. It looks like I don't a, get it. it looks like a fleshy claw. It looks like she's got like a like um what do you call those like um nicotine patches? It looks like she has a nicotine patch right there on her <laughs> on her thumb. It's really strange. <laughs> Anyway, maybe that's why she's freaking out. She needs a cigarette. It's just her face, man. It's just yeah. the worst. Yeah, it's just like getting ready to take a bite out of a cheeseburger. 
All right, guys. Well, thank you guys so much for uh, hanging out with us as we kind of talk about these cards and give you guys our thoughts and opinion on them. Um, Kevin was not able to join us because he has gotten married and he's been on his honeymoon and enjoying the nice shift in his life uh, for the better. So he was not able to join us, but he wanted to uh, tell you guys that he appreciates it, appreciates all your support and bearing with him as he is out on his new life adventure. He is going to be coming back with more Let's Plays and more of the stream content that we put out for you guys guys which our streams are on saturday nights and for everyone that uh, missed our last win a box on our live stream last week make sure to check that out um, we had a winner that was able to receive an entire box of way of the force we're trying to get those cards back to you guys and trying to get you guys more in tune with the cards that are out giving you guys the chance to get these cards because they can be expensive. So all of our Patreon members get entered into this um, as a chance to win that. And again, guys, thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much for the comments and the, the, the likes and subscribes and the feedback you give us in our Discord channel. And uh, we're going to continue to do our best to bring you more and more. We just need your feedback, and we'd love to hear what you guys think about these top 10 cards that we presented to you guys. All right, a couple things. So... If you want to know where the real conversations happen, it's on our Discord. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to put the link in the show notes. Um, click on that. Come in. Everybody's welcome. Um, we do things like deck builds. We have general conversations. Um, Ash and I'll say good morning to you every morning. It's it's a great place to interact with people and um, you know learn different ideas and kind of just become better players. Um, the winner box, super exciting. Kevin, yeah. congratulations. Yep, congratulations. And then to um, the Let's Talk, we're going to be trying to do this. You know, we're not going to commit, but we're going to try to do this on a weekly basis. Um, we did get a really great response with the Kylo Price um, Let's Talk that we did. And I think that we're going to start covering a few more decks mm -hmm. and a few more topics. Absolutely. But it really is a, you know, podcast slash discussion that we like to stay focused on one topic and not, you know, go too far down the rabbit hole. So we hope you guys like that. Let us know down in the comments what Let's Talk you would like us to to, uh, to tackle next. Mm -hmm. um, that would be extremely helpful. Uh, maybe something that, that you guys really want to hear about. Uh, maybe we'll put a poll out uh, on the Patreon account or um, – you know, to our you know general public, maybe the Twitter, and uh, we'll see what you guys want to hear. Yeah, so uh, thank you. We're not even opposed to the idea if you want to even say, hey, what do you guys think about this deck build I've been putting together? It it doesn't have a lot of uh, spotlight, but it's something that's been doing very well for me. I want your thoughts and opinion on it. Talk about it. it. We may feature a deck that you're working on and give you our thoughts and opinions on it and let you know what we like and don't like and see if maybe we're missing the combos or maybe if there's something we can even you know shed light on that might help you. Um, but this is an area where we can kind of have our little sandbox to talk about a specific topic and stay on tuned. So it's not like a big stimulating thing like our streams or some of our build, build, destroys or cantinas. It's more of a very structured discussion on certain things and follows through with like our let's plays and things of that sort so thank you guys again and i think that's it right ray yeah we'll see you next time on let's talk that's it guys and take it easy if you enjoyed this video please be sure to head over to the jackalman games patreon page where patrons receive exclusive content as well as access to our discord channel where you can interact with kevin ashton and ray on a daily basis any amount that you can provide is greatly appreciated, and we'll see you next time on Jackalman Games.